the irresponsible trolley company is back again. And this time, there are pirates and ninjas down the tracks. Fortunately, the pirates and the ninjas can do something about this. Specifically, pirates control a north-south switch, and ninjas control a west-east switch. Which means at the first junction, the pirate will choose whether the trolley goes north or south, and similarly, the ninja will control the other two junctions, determining whether the trolley goes west or east. Here's what you need to know. Pirates only care about pirates, ninjas only care about ninjas, and the ninja cannot see the pirates move. In other words, each of these individuals at the switch station only want to minimize the members of their class that are going to be in the way of the trolley. Meanwhile, when the ninja is choosing whether to send the trolley west or east, he will not have observed whether the pirate has sent the trolley north or south. Here is the puzzle. Should the pirate favor north or south? And should the ninja favor west or east? Those seem like simple enough questions, but there may very well be a trick here. While you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today is that you are going to have to use mixed strategies, which you can learn about in Chapter 1 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Are you ready for the answer? If you examine this problem intuitively, I suspect you would conclude that the pirate should favor going south. That's because going north guarantees immediately that three pirates will be in the way, with the potential for six more depending on the ninja's move. In contrast, going south at worst means that four will be hit, and it's possible that no one will be hit at all. Meanwhile, one might suspect that the ninja is going to favor west. That's because going east opens up the possibility that ten ninjas will be in the way, if the pirate had chosen north. And yet, what we're going to see in a moment is that only one of those expectations is true, and moreover, the reason that it is true does not match the intuition that I just described. Let's start off by investigating why neither of these players can behave predictably in this sort of situation. Imagine that the pirate reliably chose to go north. Well, then the ninja clearly would want to choose to go west, because there's only one ninja in the way there, as opposed to ten in the top right corner. But if the ninja is reliably choosing to go west, then the pirate would want to switch to going south. That's because, in the bottom left corner, there are no pirates in the way. But if the pirate is reliably choosing to go south, then the ninja would want to go east. That's because, looking at the bottom here, there are two pirates on the left side going west, and only one pirate on the right side going east. But if the ninja were reliably going east, then the pirate would want to go north, because only three pirates would be hit under those circumstances, as opposed to the four from before. And thus, we have a cycle. If any one of these actors behaves predictably, the other can exploit him. As a consequence, the solution to this game is going to require that both players randomize between their strategies. To analyze this further, it might help to condense all of the information into a nice matrix. The pirate is choosing whether to go north or south, and the ninja is choosing whether to go west or east. The first payoff is the number of pirates hit, the second payoff is the number of ninjas hit. In this sort of guessing game type of scenario, the way that you can prevent your opponent from taking advantage of the situation is to randomize between your strategies such that your opponent gets the same payoff regardless of the two strategies that he chooses. For example, imagine that the pirate plays north with probability p and south with probability 1 minus p then the ninja's payoffs for choosing west and east are as follows. 
if the ninja selects west, then with probability p, we will have one individual ninja hit. And with probability 1 minus p, we will have two ninjas hit. That's looking at the left side of the trolley tracks. On the right side of the trolley tracks, the ninja's payoff for going east is going to be negative 10 with probability p, because in that circumstance, the pirate is going north, and negative 1 with probability 1 minus p, because under that circumstance, the pirate is going south. If those two payoffs are equal, then there is nothing that the ninja can do to take advantage of the situation. In other words, we are curious when the payoff for west is equal to the payoff for east. That is, we need to set the first line equal to the second line. If we do that, we have one equation with one unknown variable, and we can solve for p. If we do that, we get that p is equal to 1 tenth. In other words, if the pirate goes north 10% of the time and south 90% of the time, then the ninja is equally well off regardless of whether he chooses to go west or east. This answer matches the earlier expectation, but it is not for the reason that we previously described. The pirate is not going south the majority of the time to avoid the pirates that are up top. Instead, he's choosing to go south quite a bit to punish the ninja for the temptation to try to go west. In other words, because this ninja has a natural inclination to want to go west, the pirate needs to make the ninja regret that decision more often than not. And if you look down below, there are two ninjas to the west and one ninja to the east. So if the ninja were to reliably play west, by choosing south the majority of the time, the pirate has ensured that the ninja will regret that decision. This in turn makes the ninja unsure what to do, which is the entire purpose of the pirate's strategy. What about the ninja's strategy? Well, it's the same idea. The ninja needs to design his decision to make the pirate indifferent between choosing north and south. If we let q be the probability that the ninja plays west, and 1 minus q be the probability that the ninja plays east, then the pirate's payoffs are going to be for north, q times negative 9, plus 1 minus q times negative 3, and for south, q times 0, plus 1 minus q times negative 4. Because the ninja's goal is to achieve indifference from the pirate, that means setting the payoff for north equal to the payoff for south. If we then make line 1 equal to line 2, we have one equation with one unknown variable q, which we can then solve for. And if we do that, we also get 1 tenth. In other words, the ninja is going to be playing west 10% of the time and east 90% of the time. That should be surprising. After all, the northeast outcome is absolutely disastrous to the ninja, and the ninja is opening himself up to that possibility by choosing east 90% of the time. But remember that the pirate is actually choosing to go south the majority of the time, so the ninja isn't actually going to be hit with that negative 10 all that often. Instead, the ninja is designing his strategy to punish the pirate for the temptation to go south. And if you look at the bottom here, there are four pirates to the east and no pirates to the west. Thus, by playing east more often, the ninja is punishing the pirate for that temptation to go south. Mixed strategies are weird, aren't they? If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.